Hi there, my name is Scott Phillips. I'm the president and founder of Starfish Medical. Optics has always been an important part of the practice of Starfish Medical. We find it in diagnostic type applications, imaging. Uh, we find it in therapeutic type applications. And we also find it in biotech applications. So if you're involved in any of those aspects in your project, I'm sure you'll get a lot of uh, interesting tips and insights that come out of watching these presentations. I'm Brian King. I'm Principal Optical Systems Engineer at Starfish Medical. Um, I've got a background in laser physics, laser spectroscopy, measuring single atoms using a variety of technologies, uh, all the way from the mid-infrared all the way to the deep ultraviolet. It can be really tempting to try to build the perfect optical detection system, but that'll just drive up bomb cost and overly complicate the development schedule. Design your product requirements, give yourself a moderate overhead of margin, and consider that to be good enough to meet the product requirements and an acceptable development risk, development schedule, and cost. My name is Ryan Field. I'm an optical engineer here at Starfish for the last couple of years. Before coming here, I have a background in ultrafast laser spectroscopy, which is a method of uh, measuring changes in the optical properties of materials on very short timescales. And I also did some work uh, working with surgical laser systems and surgical microscopes. Optical systems problems can often be thought of not just as measurement problems, but also as display problems. So that means that uh, we have to think about both how we're going to collect the data and also how that data is going to be presented to the end user. On the measurement side, we need to think about what our light source is going to be, uh, such as what its spectrum is, how much power it has, um, as well as what the characteristics of our detector are, uh, and also, of course, what the optics in between need to be in order to achieve the functionality we need. Uh, but it's equally important that on the display side, things be displayed to the user uh, with appropriate fidelity. So what that means depends on the use case. Uh, so for example, if we're taking an image that's going to be used for diagnostics, uh, it could be important to um, show the image in high resolution and for it to have accurate color rendering. Uh, if we are uh, using, uh, say, a video chain for real-time feedback, then it could be important that that chain has low latency and a high enough frame rate in order to support that. On the other hand, if we are using a display that's just for basic device navigation and we're not so concerned about the details of what's on screen, then using a very high resolution image capture and display might just be driving up your cost and performance requirements uh, without actually having any tangible benefit. Uh, and to take an even simpler case, if you're doing a quantitative measurement, then it might be appropriate to just display your data uh, as a graph, in which case the specifics of the display are a lot less important. So for an optical system problem, uh, we need to consider really the whole signal chain that starts from uh, the photons leaving the light source and ends uh, with the photons from the display reaching the end user's eyes. Hi, my name is Kenneth McCallum. I'm a principal engineering physicist here at Starfish. I specialize in electronics, but a lot of my work involves optics as well as system level design architecture. In any medical device that involves optics, there's uh, you know, the optical elements, but somewhere there's a source of photons, somewhere there is uh, an interface to either a patient or an assay. There's sensors that collect the photons, and then it goes into the realm of electronics, moves its way to firmware or logic, all the way to software. And that kind of describes most systems. In amongst all of those major chunks, you know, people focus on the optics or processing electronics or whatever. In between all of those things are the gaps that people often lose sight of. And putting all of it together and filling those gaps is one of the areas that I come in. Because each one of those elements may be well understood, may work really well, etc. But putting it all together and turning this into a medical device that does what it, you know, that clinical need that it was intending to, uh, to provide, that's, you know, you can't leave any of those gaps anymore. You've got to work everything out to the last detail. And so taking a collection of, out of somebody's head of <clears throat> these subcomponents and making it real, making it into a device uh, is something that I really enjoy. 
Hi, my name is Christian McMechan. I'm an electrical engineer here at Starfish Medical. So our clients, uh, typically, if they have a, an optical system, falls under one of two categories. It's either laser or LED based, usually emission uh, either for therapeutic use or for surgical use. Um, if you have an LED based system, then, uh, then you're going to want to look at uh, IEC 62471, which is photobiological safety of LED systems, or uh, IEC 6825, which is the general governing standards for lasers. Uh, but if you have a medical device, uh, and it's 3B or 4, which is the highest classification of laser, and it's uh, therapeutic or surgical, then 6601-2-22 uh, applies to you. Um, that standard takes all the important parts uh, of the 6825 and massages it to, uh, to apply to medical devices specifically. We once worked on a laser-based system with uh, essentially 100 laser diodes uh, imparting energy, optical energy, into uh, someone's body. Um, now you can imagine with a hundred laser diodes, uh, there's a lot of heat being generated, uh, there's a, a lot of contact points onto the patient, and so the, the general safety standards, you know, just regular 6601-1-1 uh, applies for electrical safety, as well as uh, all of the skin contact temperatures uh, and, and other requirements. There were a lot of paddles opposed to somebody's body and we each individual paddle was essentially uh, its own type BF applied part, uh, which means that there's a, a fair amount of separation, electrical separation between them. Um, they had to thermally behave and they had to deliver their optical energy into the body uh, reliably. Uh, this was challenging because the paddle was, uh, was fairly small. And, uh, and we had to control it in such a way that, uh, that we could still deliver the energy and manage the heat. My name is Scott Parsons. I work at Starfish Medical. I'm the mechanical engineering team lead for the Toronto office. An application that I worked for on in the past was a mirror which was suspended above a light source. This mirror was fairly large. It was about 8 inches by 10 inches and weighed about 20 pounds. The light source itself was fairly intense uh, and would generate quite a bit of heat. The mirror was suspended using four pads. Uh, in between the pads and the mirror was an elastomeric material that would be used to, to hold it into place. Uh, the material also allowed for uh, growth of the mirror as it heated up. The problem with the original design that we had with that was that the elastomeric material that we used took anywhere between 24 and 48 hours to cure. This would tie up the, the build center for that period of time and we could not continue building uh, additional, additional light boxes. So the task was to create, uh, to come up with another adhesive that would cure in a quicker time and allow for a higher rate of production. The new adhesive that we wanted to use would have to have very low off-gassing, uh, as off-gassing could cloud the mirror. Uh, it would have to function in the temperature range of the application, uh, and finally would have to cure uh, substantially quicker than, than the old one. What we ended up using was a uh, UV cured elastomeric material. Um, we would apply it in between the pads while the, the mirror was suspended using a, a test jig. Uh, and then we would use light pipes uh, to shine the ultraviolet light into in and around the, uh, the adhesive and fully cure it. Um, before removing it from the fixture. In the end, the time that it took to do the curing was 15 minutes, which was substantially less than the original 24 to 48 hours. And the throughput uh, increased significantly on this particular product. If you'd like to know more about Starfish, we've been doing this for 20 years. We've developed hundreds of devices for companies all over the industry, and we've helped many founders become very successful and have big clinical impacts. That's what we really love for. So enjoy the content. If you'd like to talk to us about your project, we'd be happy to talk. Thank you.